Steel, a 1997 American superhero film, loosely based on the DC Comics character of the same name. The film stars Shaquille O'Neal as John Henry Irons and... Wait. You mean Steel-type Pokemon? So this isn't a movie review. Oh. <coughs> Sorry about that. Steel-type Pokemon. They're... very solid. Steel is one of the best types in the game. So you're probably thinking, a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Black 2 using only Steel-type Pokemon should be a breeze. Right? Well, there's only one way to find out. This is my attempt at successfully transitioning from a film critic to a Nuzlocker. There's a surprising amount of Steel-type Pokemon available in this game. However, a few of them are exclusively available in Charge Zone Cave. I plan to address that issue in a moment, but for now, here are the rules. The full rule set will be listed down in the description below. If you want to see more content like this, and less movie reviews of terrible films from the 90s, please consider subscribing to the channel. As I mentioned earlier, there are a few Pokemon that are only available in Charged Stone Cave. While there is a Steel type available to me prior to the first gym, I was a bit worried about potentially going over the level cap as after the initial few encounters, there's a bit of a gap between there and the next one. As a result, I decided to replace Snivy with one of the Charge Stone encounters, Ferroseed. In hindsight, its Iron Barb's ability might have been a little bit too strong for the early game. I nickname him Thor, and he has a serious nature, which is neutral. Hugh then challenges me to a battle, and it goes very poorly for him. Eventually, that Tepig will evolve into a serious problem, but for now, Hugh is a pushover. In the Pokemon Center, this person says, Oh, you're Ferroseed. Its nature is serious. With a Pokemon like that by your side, I'm sure you'll have a fun journey. Oh yeah, who doesn't love traveling with someone that's serious all the time? Sounds like a blast. Speaking of having a blast, Alder sure does love to jump off cliffs in front of strangers. Continuing on, I find the second team member, Riolu. I name him Chuck, and he too has a serious nature. We're just a few very serious guys hanging out. Chuck isn't Steel-type yet, but with the help of some serious cardio, I'm able to evolve him into Lucario, one of my favorite Pokemon from Gen 4. I train up the team to the level cap and get ready to take on Charon. He leads with a Pat Rat, and I lead with Thor. Seeing as I know he loves to go for workup, I take the opportunity to set up a few curses. I then switch to Rollout, which does a little under half, then a completely unnecessary crit takes it out. Lillipop comes in and also goes for a workup, and Thor misses a rollout. Fortunately, a combination of tackle and iron barb damage is enough to finish off Lillipop, earning us the first badge. On the way to Verbank City, this lady stops me just to mock me for only having two Pokemon. Then she says, why don't you catch more Pokemon? As I'm just about ready to tell her off, she hands me a few Great Balls, so I let it slide. For now. In the Verbank Complex is the last encounter for quite a while. Magnemite. I use my gigantic brain and come up with a very unique nickname. Then I check the nature and it's brave, which is fitting, but also terrible. Plus attack and minus speed. Also, they have the magnet pull ability instead of sturdy. Yikes. Fortunately, none of that will be an issue right now, as the second gym is a poison type gym. As you can imagine, this battle isn't very intimidating. I don't even bother leveling up to the level cap, as Magneto easily deals with Roxy's Pokemon. After the battle, the DJ comes over and utters to me the most terrifying sentence in all of Pokemon. Please come with me to Pokestar Studios. After filming the greatest film since the 1997 cinematic masterpiece, Steel, and beating some plasma grunts, I set sail for Castelia City. There's a ton of useful items here, as well as the next gym. Before that though, Hugh and I head into the sewers. On purpose. There's all kinds of cool stuff in the sewer, like some delicious leftovers laying on the floor. Once we're done rooting around in filth, I head back to the gym to take on Berg. I lead with Thor against Swadloon and use a similar strategy to Charon and set up a few curses. With the leftovers attached, I'm free to set up three, then go for a rollout which once again does just about half, and a second takes it out. Dwebble has Sturdy, so it survives at 1 HP, and Berg uses a Hyper Potion. A fourth hit wastes a crit, and the fifth takes it down. Unfortunately, Thor is no longer using Rollout as Levani comes in, so he has to start over, and a second Rollout just misses the KO and activates the Citrus Berry. 
My third rollout knocks it out, and we've got our third badge. I head north of the city. Colrest clears the path for us, then challenges me to a battle. Fortunately, Chuck can take care of his team with ease. I make it through the desert and get to Nimbasa City, and with the level cap at level 30, Magneto is able to evolve into Magneton. The fourth gym leader is Alessa, and her team is much scarier than anything we've faced so far, as her Zeb Strika knows Flame Charge. I lead with Magneto against Amolga and go for Thunder Wave, just in case she went for Volt Switch, but she goes for Pursuit instead. Ultimately, she never switches out and goes down to two Thunder Shocks. In comes Zeb Strika, and I decide my best bet is to try and lower its accuracy with Mirror Shot. Fortunately, she goes for Quick Attack instead of Flame Charge, but we don't get the accuracy drop. Then she goes for Flame Charge, which Magneto tanks pretty well thanks to a Hell Devia Light, but we miss our Mirror Shot. She then goes for Pursuit for some reason, and this time Mirror Shot connects and gets the accuracy drop, but activates her Citrus Berry. Yet another turn where she doesn't go for Flame Charge, so I decide to switch into Chuck as I don't want to risk a crit, and she finally goes for Flame Charge again, but misses due to the lowered accuracy. Then she outspeeds and goes for Volt Switch, which sends in Flaffy as I go for Dig. On the way back up, Static unfortunately paralyzes Chuck. I don't have a choice here. I have to hope that she doesn't crit with Flame Charge, and I have to hope that Chuck doesn't get fully paralyzed. Flame Charge doesn't crit, and Chuck goes underground and he comes up clutch and lands the dig for the KO. There are a lot of ways that this battle could have gone wrong, but thankfully the Poke Gods were on our side. With the fourth gym defeated, I'm able to chase Dust Clouds in Relic Passage until I find a Drill Burr. I name her Leia, and she's a sassy girl, which is cute and all, but also terrible, plus special defense and minus speed. I evolve her into an Excadrill, and with her steel typing, she joins the team. Up ahead is a rotation battle that can be quite difficult, but fortunately Magneto is well equipped to handle the situation. I cross the bridge and get to Drift Vale and meet Rude, who's actually quite nice. That might be the dumbest joke I've ever written. I like that in the sequels you're gifted a Zerua, as I think it's a pretty cool Pokemon, but that's a story for another monotype run. There's a few more possible encounters up ahead, starting with the Carablast, which evolves into Escavalier, a Pokemon I've never used in a Nuzlocke. I name her Arya. I then head into Chargestone Cave and there are two possible encounters remaining. Either a Clink, or in a Dust Cloud, Nosepass, which would evolve into a Steel-type. I end up running into a Clink, so I catch it, and at this point I realize I missed a golden opportunity to name all of my Pokemon after Metal Bands, so I name it Slayer. Also in Chargestone Cave, Magneto evolves into Magnezone. I also take the opportunity to evolve Arya into Escavalier. I'm going to need all the help I can get for the next gym, which is against the ground type leader, Clay. He leads with Crocorock and I send in Aria, who gets hit with Intimidate. He uses Torment and then goes down to a Bug Buzz. Clay then sends in Excadrill and I need to do some damage to it, but both Slash and Bug Buzz do very little. Leftovers keeps Aria relatively healthy as she chips away and eventually activates his Citrus Berry. A bit more chip damage and I switch into Leia who tanks a Metal Claw. According to my calcs, she can live a bulldoze, but he just goes for Slash. Leia then takes it out with a dig. His last Pokemon is Sand Slash, so I send in Chuck who's holding an air balloon and he dodges the bulldoze. Force Palm then paralyzes, but it doesn't do much damage. Crush Claw then pops the air balloon and lowers Chuck's defense. So I have to send in Thor, who tanks a bulldoze reasonably well thanks to the Eviolite. Unfortunately, Metal Claw doesn't do much damage in return. Clay then uses a Hyper Potion and goes for Rollout, which will force Sand Slash into taking Iron Barb damage, which really helps, considering Thor missed a Metal Claw. I send Leia back in since he's locked into Rollout and he gets fully paralyzed. She's then able to KO with a Dig. All in all, that battle went about as well as I could have hoped for, considering the type disadvantage that we had. Beating Clay unlocks the Pokemon World Tournament. And after more Team Plasma nonsense, Charon gives me the Surf HM, which gives me access to Mistralton Cave and another encounter, Aeron. I catch him and I name him Pantera. He has a Timid Nature, which is plus speed and minus attack, which is terrible. He quickly evolves into a Laron, then I head back to Charge Stone Cave and make my way through to Mistralton City. Professor Juniper then formally introduces herself and gives me a Master Ball. Um, was I supposed to bring a gift? Do you want one of my potions? The next gym leader is Skyla, the flying type gym leader. Unfortunately for her, I have Magneto. Unfortunately for me, 
Magneto still has to use Thundershock. Even with Thundershock, Magneto is able to easily take down Swoobat and Swana. And after Skarmory heals, I decide to have a bit of fun and go for Volt Switch to finish off Skarmory with Leia. After leaving the gym, we fly over to Lentimos Town where another new team member awaits. After running around for a while, I finally find and catch a Skarmory. I name him Ramstein. Ramstein has a relaxed nature which is plus defense but minus speed. Continuing on, Thor finally evolves into a Ferrothorn and learns a Grass-type move. I pick up the Shadow Ball TM, then I walk into the house I found the TM behind and... Nope. I'm getting the f*** out of here. With the help of Bianca, I make it to Andela Town and have another battle with Hugh. He leads with Unpheasant, and after using Detect and Taunt, goes down to Magneto. He then sends in Embor, so I go for Volt Switch but he just uses takedown, and then takes big damage as I send in Pantera, as he's the only one that takes neutral damage from fire attacks. Hugh doesn't seem interested in that though, as he just goes for assurance, so Pantera takes out Embor with Dig. Last up is Simapore, so I send in Thor, and he just goes for Leer twice. Hugh might want to reconsider his strategy. On the way to Opelucid City, Pantera evolves into Agron. While trying to cross the village bridge, a gentleman informs me that he is on a 999 battle win streak. Clearly this man has mastered nuzlocking. Today, however, is not his lucky day. I channel my inner Cynthia and end his run. Finally in Opelucid City, I'm greeted by Iris who calls Drayden Grandpa, wishes me luck, and then runs off. Before battling Grandpa, I take her advice and head to Route 9, where another encounter awaits, Pawniard. I name him Megadeth. Before taking on Drayden, I need to teach the team some new moves. If you need shards, you can head over to the Pokemon World Tournament and immediately run from battle, and you'll get a random shard as a consolation prize. Once I have enough, I teach Ice Punch to Chuck. Okay, Grandpa. We're as ready as we'll ever be. Let's battle. He leads with Dredagon and I lead with Ramstein. No one on the team can one-shot this thing, and it knows revenge. I go for Steel Wing and he goes for revenge. We repeat the process and we're both in the yellow. I go for Fly and Ramstein lands a crit, which might have mattered there. Flygon comes in next and I send in Chuck, but unfortunately he goes for Dragon Tail, so Pantera is forced in. I go for Protect to scout an Earth Power, then send in Ramstein on the next one. He tanks a Rock Slide and goes for Fly, which does decent damage. I know he can live a crit, so I stay in and he survives on 25 HP, then a second Fly takes Flygon pretty low. I send in Thor who gets hit with Dragon Tail, but thanks to Iron Barb and a held Rocky Helmet, Flygon knocks itself out. Last is Haxorus, which is pretty terrifying if it sets up too many Dragon Dances. I send in Chuck and he gets off two, and Chuck lands an Ice Punch, which activates his Citrus Berry. Fortunately Slash doesn't crit, and a second Ice Punch finishes the job. I should have done a better job playing around the crit there. One of the nice things about making these videos is it allows me to review my play as I'm writing the script and I'm editing the videos. And, in theory, it will help me improve over time. I hope. Team Plasma shows up with their flying sailboat and freezes Opelucid City. And until the important fights, I'm going to skip a lot of the Team Plasma stuff because it's not too eventful, considering Zinzolin is a total pushover with my team of Steel-type Pokemon. I head over to the Marine Tube in Humalau City and prepare to take on the final gym. Marlin leads with Caracosta, which knows Shell Smash, and with the sturdy ability, he's able to survive a discharge, use Shell Smash, then heal back up to full HP. I go for Thunder Wave on the heal turn because he now outspeeds Magneto. Discharge once again takes him to 1 HP, and unfortunately, no paralysis. Scald then does big damage, but no crit or burn, and one more discharge takes it out. Whale Lord is next and goes down to a discharge. Last is Jellicent, and it's not a one-hit KO, so I have to switch to Thor who easily tanks a Brine. He then gets burned on the following turn with Scald, so Power Whip does less damage, but it's still enough to bring Jellicent into berry range. A second Power Whip KOs the Spooky Jellyfish, and with that, we have all eight badges. Back on the flying sailboat, Hugh and I easily beat Zinzolin yet again, and head to the Giant Chasm. It's here where I've got another encounter, Metang. I use the Master Ball and name him Metallica who has a neutral nature. Metallica quickly evolves into Metagross and they join the team. After a never-ending barrage of grunts, Zinzolin decides to embarrass himself one last time. Horus is up next and he leads with Magneton who's holding an Eviolite, which brings back some fond memories. I lead with Leia and Earthquake activates Magneton's sturdy ability. 
Then, as he heals, I use Strength to break Sturdy, and a second Earthquake does the job. Magnazone is next, and this time I go for Strength first, then take it out with Earthquake as well. He sends in Behem, so I send in Megadeth. Night Slash just barely doesn't KO, but Energy Ball doesn't do much, and X Scissor takes it out on the next turn. Kling Clang comes in holding an Air Balloon, so I do some chip damage to pop it before switching into Leia for another Earthquake KO. Metang comes in and suffers a similar fate. With Colrus out of the way, I finally meet the man making me do all this extra stuff, Getsis. I defeat the Shadow Triad and get ready for the most difficult battle of the run so far. Before the battle, Getsis decides to try and literally kill me with giant shards of ice. Fortunately, N stops this man from murdering a child. Getsis retaliates by mutating Curum into a complete monstrosity. Before fighting him, I've got to defeat Frankenstein's monster. I want to lead with Megadeth vs Getsis, so I have to lead with him vs Kyurem, but after getting paralyzed, I switch into Metallica, who's able to knock it out with Meteor Mash. No longer resorting to murdering me, Getsis sends out Kofagrigus, who's a two-hit KO with Night Slash from Megadeth, although he stalls for a bit with Protect. Seismitoad comes in, and I send in Thor, who gets hit by Drain Punch. I would love to just knock it out with Power Whip, but behind this wart-covered toad is Electros with Flamethrower, so I need to set up Sandstorm for Pantera. This forces me to leave Thor in to take a few more Drain Punches, and after a Power Whip takes out the Toad, Electros comes in. I switch to Pantera on a Flamethrower, and then retaliate with a Rock Slide which does just over half. Thunderbolt takes us to 56 HP, and a second Rock Slide takes out Electros. Here is where I wish I brought Ramstein, as Thor is the only one on the team that can reasonably tank an Earthquake. I send him in and it does 28 damage, so after the Leftovers, Thor is up to 32 HP, and can tank another and survives at just 6 HP. I use Sandstorm again, and sadly, I have to sacrifice Thor. I need to switch in Leia, but because of her minus speed nature, she won't outspeed Drapion, and she can't tank two Earthquakes. Rest easy, my spiky friend. Leia comes in and tanks an Earthquake, and avenges our starter. Toxicroak comes in, but Leia outspeeds him and KOs with Earthquake. Last is his Hydreigon, so I send in Metallica as he misses a Dragon Rush. He misses a crunch, and then Metallica puts him in the red with Hammer Arm. Getsis has to heal, so I swap into Megadeth. He then gets crit by Dragon Rush to just 30 HP, but two can play at that game. Megadeth retaliates with a crit of his own, and with that, Getsis is defeated. It's bittersweet. Thor was there from the start. I should be happy about the victory. But what is victory worth if you can't celebrate it with the ones you love? Is it really worth chasing success? if there's no one there to hug at the finish line? Even if that someone is covered in iron barbs and leaves puncture wounds upon physical contact. Though the pain will never go away, time does heal all wounds, and I push forward to Victory Road. We're almost at the Elite Four, but there's one more obstacle. Hugh. He leads with Unpheasant, and I lead with Pantera. He hits us with Swagger, but Pantera breaks through and KOs with Rock Slide. Bufalant comes in, and I send in Ramstein on the Earthquake. I send in Chuck on a wild charge, but it crits and takes him to just 9 HP. Chuck responds with a close combat, and takes out the Afro Buffalo. I don't really have a great play here, so I send in Leia who gets hit to just 32 HP by Brick Break. Fortunately she's able to outspeed and KO with Earthquake. Last up is Simipore, so I send in Magneto who gets hit with Brick Break. Surf then takes us to just 42 HP, but Magneto is able to KO with Discharge. For almost killing more of my friends, Hugh apologizes with the Thunderbolt TM, and I head up to the Elite Four. Before that, I head over to the Abundant Shrine, for the last encounter of the run, Bronzor. I named them Slipknot, and I was hoping for the heatproof ability, but unfortunately, it's Levitate. With that, here's a final look at the team. After a bit of strategizing and training, I think the squad is as ready as they're going to be. It's time to take on the Elite Four. I decide to start with Grimsley, and lead with Chuck against Liopard, as his inner focus ability will prevent the flinch from fake out, and he can retaliate with an aura sphere for the KO. Unfortunately, Crocodile will outspeed, so I have to switch to Ramstein on the Earthquake. He then easily tanks a crunch and does just over half with X Scissor, and the second takes it out. Scrafty is up next, and Ramstein outspeeds and goes for Fly, which brings it to the yellow as we're hit with a Rock Tim. Apparently Scrafty was in heal range as he uses a full restore, and X Scissor does a bit less than I had hoped. Due to the defense drop from the crunch earlier, Brick Break takes Ramstein to just 41 HP, 
but Fly takes down the Scrafty. Last up is Bisharp, so I send out Chuck who gets crit by a Night Slash, but a 4 times super effective Aura Sphere finishes off Grimsley's last Pokemon. Next up is Caitlyn. I lead with Leia versus her Musharna, and set up a Swords Dance as she goes for a Yawn. I go for X Scissor now, because I don't want to risk her using Reflect if I get greedy and go for another Swords Dance. We get the KO, and the Chesto Berry wakes up Leia. Reuniclus is in next, and X Scissor is a clean one-hit KO. Sigilith comes out, and Leia lands a Rock Slide for another KO. Gothitelle is her last Pokemon, and it too goes down in one hit to an X-Scissor. Excadrill is pretty awesome. With the easier two out of the way, I have a choice. The Fighting-type Marshall, or the Ghost-type Chantal. In spite of the type advantage, I choose to go with Marshall. He leads with Throw, and I send in Metallica. Psychic does decent damage, and gets a special drop, but it also brought him into full restore range. A second Psychic now KOs thanks to the special drop, which was pretty clutch. Mian Shao comes in and goes for Bounce, which paralyzes Metallica, who's then fully paralyzed. A second Bounce brings us to 76 HP, and Psychic knocks it out in one shot. Conkeldur comes in, and I have to switch, so I send in Ramstein who gets hit pretty hard by a Hammer Arm in spite of his massive defense. I go for Fly, and Conkeldur goes for Bulk Up, which is pretty scary. Fortunately while in the air, Ramstein will heal from leftovers. Fly does under half, but Conkeldur misses a Hammer Arm. I decide to go for Steel Wing, hoping to raise our defense, which activates his Citrus Berry, and Hammer Arm takes Ramstein to just 38 HP after leftovers. At this point, I'm pretty sure this is the end of the road for our Metal Bird. I go for Fly again, then Conkeldur misses another Hammer Arm. Wow. One more Fly does just enough to KO, and I can't believe that Ramstein is still alive. Sock comes in, and Brick Break takes him to 45 HP after leftovers heal. Then Fly activates Sock's Sturdy ability. Thanks to the leftovers, I know Ramstein can land a non-critical hit Brick Break, and I decide that since he's already cheated death once, it's worth the risk. He lives on just 10 HP, and knocks out Sock. With that, Marshall is defeated. There's no time to breathe a sigh of relief yet though, as Chantal has a Chandelure with Fire Blast, and it will absolutely devastate most of the team if it hits. She leads with Kofagrigus, and I send out Leia, and set up a Swords Dance as she hits a weak Shadow Ball. I go for a Swords Dance, and Kofagrigus misses a will o -Wisp, but we have a berry attached for that just in case it hit. Leia can now one-shot with Earthquake. Chandelure comes in, and thankfully Leia can outspeed, because otherwise, that thing would have been a real problem. Golurk comes in, but Earthquake does enough to take it out as well. Last up is Driftblum, and Leia misses a Rock Slide, but a second connects and gets the KO. In hindsight, Chantal ended up being quite easy. With that, there's only one thing left to do. Ascend the massive flight of steps, and take on Iris. She leads with her Hydreigon that knows Flamethrower, and if it crits, I'm in deep trouble. Fortunately, Chuck hangs on for dear life, and retaliates with a close combat for the KO. Drudagon comes in next, and I don't have a safe switch, so... Unfortunately, Chuck has to make the ultimate sacrifice. He lands an Ice Punch, and goes down to Flamethrower. Rest easy, buddy. Leia comes in, and with Drudagon low, she can finish it off with Earthquake. Agron comes in next for some reason, and is quickly eradicated with another Earthquake. Haxorus comes out and starts going for Dragon Dance, which is pretty terrifying. Earthquake does good damage, and then I send in Ramstein to dodge their Earthquake. With his massive defense, he should be able to survive a hit easily. And at this HP, Fly should be a KO. Both turn out to be true, as Ramstein is still at 140 HP after Leftover's heal. Lapras comes in, so I swap to Magneto, who hasn't done anything up to this point. Lapras fortunately misses Sing twice in a row, then Discharge brings it to the red. As I realize, I forgot to use the Thunderbolt TM Hugh gave me. Iris uses a full restore, and a second Discharge gets a low roll. Magneto then tanks a Surf, and takes out Lapras. Her last Pokemon is Archops. Magneto tanks a Rock Slide, but flinches. A second one brings us low, but Discharge is able to one-shot the Ancient Bird, and with that, we've beaten the Elite Four and the run. Unsurprisingly, the Steel-type Pokemon were pretty strong from start to finish. As I get better at Nuzlocking, I'll be trying more difficult challenges in the future. If you're interested in joining me on that journey, please consider subscribing to the channel, and giving the video a like, as it really helps me out a lot. With that, it's time to head out. Thanks for watching, and I'll smell you later.